Welcome to Pints and Politics. I'm your host, Dan Parsons. Pints and Politics is an event-driven project, and we talk to the newsmakers and the policymakers, not only here in Lincoln, but throughout Nebraska. And we do that by, well, I think the only way we should talk about politics is with a great Nebraska craft beer. So welcome to episode number mm. 44. And let me introduce our guest, Jane Raybold from the Lincoln City Council. Jane, welcome. Well, thank you. It is such an honor to be back here doing pints and politics. I seem to recall that we probably did this back in 2017. You're absolutely right. Jane was my very first guest on episode one. So we've done 43 episodes and it took me that long to invite you back on. That's okay. I wasn't keeping score, but I, I can tell you it's a real honor to, oh. to be here back with you and to really celebrate another great uh, beverage oh, from wow. one of our local breweries. And it is. And in, in that episode number 40, uh, number one episode back in January of 2017, uh, uh, we had Matt Stinchfield with yeah. Plowshare Brewing. God bless Matt. Nobody knows where he's at these days, but uh, hopefully this isn't a harbinger of things to come because unfortunately, Plasher Brewing is no longer mm -hmm. with us. Uh, Matt is out doing wonderful things, probably judging uh, world beer competitions. Probably, but you know, he, he broke the ice on really uh, getting other brewmeisters out there and really setting the stage to make Lincoln a great place to come and sample all the amazing beers that have sprung up since he started. It's so. true. And I, I, I loved Plash Air Beer. And uh, so we're, we're sad that Matt's not with us, but we're so thrilled that you're with us, Jane. And let me just give a little bit of an introduction uh, of Jane. Fourth generation uh, a Nebraskan, and you help run uh, the family grocery business uh, that your parents started 54 years ago. Uh, and it's b &R Stores, Inc. And you have 20 locations, a Super Saver and Russ's Markets, across the entire state and you employ about 2,000 Nebraskans, is that right? That's right, and you know, we have other stores in Iowa as well. We keep marching on and growing our company. So we have cash savers in, in Iowa, we have super savers as well in a Russ's market. So we're, we're going places and uh, uh, I'm a grocer and I, and I love being a grocer. Well, that, that small business, uh, acumen uh, certainly has served you well, I suspect, in your political career. And let me just briefly <clears throat> remind our viewers and listeners uh, of, of your political career. You currently are on the uh, Lincoln City Council. Uh, you were elected first in 2015 and re-elected to a four-year term in 2019, right? Yep. And prior to that, uh, so that's District 3 in Southwest Lincoln. Uh, in 2018, you were the Democratic nominee for the United States Senate here in Nebraska. So, holy smokes, that, that was an experience. <laughs> that was really an honor to be able to travel all across the state and, of course, go to a lot of amazing breweries as well, yeah. along with uh, my staff. But, yeah, it was a tremendous honor. I think, um, not that I'm addicted to campaigning, but I certainly love reaching out to different Nebraskans and listening, just listening to what are their big issues? What are their concerns? How can I make a difference for them? And it's a lot of fun. We have so many amazing people all across our state and uh, it's a wonderful way to get to know them and, and to hear their stories. And I also know Jane, uh, because one of your hobbies when you're not uh, politicking or running uh, your grocery stores, you're an avid bicyclist. Yes, and so are you. And yes. that's, you know, that's very important because, of course, we go to different breweries yeah, we do. around Nebraska. But, you know, it, it really just uh, amazes me because every little community that we go to is so proud of what whatever economic development they have going on. But they're also very proud of the pies that they make yes. and serve and certainly cinnamon rolls. So I feel like I'm quite an expert on cinnamon rolls as well. And I've been very privileged to be a judge at the Lancaster County Fair when it comes to cinnamon rolls. So very that's nice. probably a little known secret about myself, but nice. I, I, I feel like I am, am certainly qualified based on the number of cinnamon rolls I've consumed over my cycling days. So Well, a, a, a tremendous uh, background and experience. And, and you just recently announced as you're running for the Nebraska legislature. Congratulations. Thank you. District 28, which uh, for those who may may not know, that's 
currently occupied by Patty, Ban Patty Pansing Brooks. That's Patty right. Patty is term limited, can only serve two terms, eight years in Nebraska legislature. Mm -hmm. So Patty is, uh, is trying to move on and, and actually running for another uh, position here in the state. You need to have Patty on for pints for Patty or Patty that and pints, you know, something like that. I, 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 I'll take that because, yeah. well, this is an election year. Let's face it, 2022, yep. we're into an election year. Um, and so you've announced for that. So my goodness, if you weren't busy enough yeah. running grocery stores, serving on the Lincoln City Council and uh, now running for the Nebraska legislature. People think I'm crazy, but you know what? It's a district that I've represented for almost 12 years sure. already. So if people can imagine this, a Lancaster County Commissioner has a big, huge quadrant, the Southwest quadrant of our county. And then as a city council member, my, my district is a little bit smaller. And the legislative district that Patty has served so well, big shoes to fill, yeah. Legislative District 28 is just like a little teeny slice of my current city council district that I represent. So I feel like I've walked these precincts and I've rung a lot of doorbells and I've listened to a lot of my constituents. And I think, and I never get tired of doing that. I never ever get tired of doing it. It is so much fun. Uh, I walked three, three precincts before it got cold nice. in the fall. And you know, a number of people were out raking leaves and you just, you know, what are your issues? What are your concerns? How do you feel about what's going on in our city, our county, our state? And it just opens up a, you know, a floodgate and people talk and they share. Well, you're very approachable. That's, well, I, hope I mean, so. you're very approachable. So before we get any further along in our conversation, yeah. We need to pause for a moment and, and enjoy a Nebraska craft beer. So Great. Um, <laughs> I have chosen for us this okay. today a uh, uh, from our friends, uh, Sam and Michelle Riggins, who own a Cosmic Eye Brewery uh, here in Lincoln. That I have frequented. Yes. In fact, <laughs> I think last time we saw each other, we were at we were an there. event at Cosmic Eye. We may see a photo of that uh, <laughs> uh, on the uh, on the okay, so this too. is Everything Has Eyes, okay, uh, and it's a, a post-haze IPA. I, I really like this beer. I have had to admit when Jane sat down, I told her I, when I put together my notes, I sampled one of these. So, so I'm one in, Jane, but let me tell you a little <laughs> bit about... Well, I need to catch up then. Oh my gosh. Has eyes. So uh, Sam Riggins is the uh, is the proprietor, along with his uh, wife Michelle. Wonderful family, uh, and I knew Sam. Sam was the lead brewer for Nebraska Brewing Company years ago, and yeah. Sam was uh, testing out recipes and doing home brewery like a lot of these uh, people do. And so I would see Sam at you know little events, and he'd have his little uh, <laughs> display up with his brew. It's like, Sam, when are you going to start your own brewery? Well, he did several years ago, and this is the result. So, uh, Everything Has Eyes. Uh, it's a New England nice. style post haze IPA with stone fruits and citrus flavors. I can smell them. With a pulpy residue. So, cheers, cheers. cheers. This is outstanding. Right? <laughs> it's really good. I, I really, this would. You know, this could be a... Uh, this could be my go-to. Yeah. After a city council meeting. City council <laughs> meetings, <laughs> shoveling some snow. Um, any occasion, really, any occasion to celebrate. But this is a top-rated top IPA. They won a Wine Enthusiast uh, in the summer of 2020 uh, wow. award. So thanks to Sam and Michelle Riggins so and Cosmic Eye Brewery. Everything Go visit eyes. them. Uh, they're... They do events, they, obviously with COVID, things have slowed yeah. down for them again, but uh, when things are safe, go out and see uh, Cosmic Eye. I think last time we were there, things were safer at that time. They were. So people could get out and about, and it was pretty crowded, yeah. which was good to see. Yeah. But I think people do have to keep safe. Yes, absolutely. Without a doubt. Well, uh, Jane. This is delicious. I, you, can, can, can you, you can go there and buy it and you, take it home you and absolutely drink. absolutely can. So, and, and please do. I, I was having that conversation with Sam. And, and uh, if you really want to help out the local brewers, go to their place and buy takeout. Because if you buy it from hy V or even your stores, yeah. uh, I don't know if you carry them, but uh, they obviously take a little cut, as you should. And so if you really want to help out the brewers, go to their 
propriety, go to their location and stock up on, on beer. And they have, I, I seem to recall, they have refrigerated cases right up in the front of the area so that you can pick it out and just go pay at the bar. And, and probably bring it out to your car. You're, <laughs> yeah. so, that would be a great convenience. That would be very convenient. All right, well, okay. let's, uh, let's talk shop. All right. Uh, first of all, maybe just uh, talk a little bit about your experience I, I think it's fascinating. Um, county board, Lancaster County Board, you served, was it one term or two terms? Just one term. Just one term. Uh, and then city council for two terms now. You're in your second term. What's the dynamics uh, between those jobs? And uh, that's one question. The, two, the second part of that question is, will that be helpful to you in serving in the legislature? Well, I think it would be helpful to anyone. And you know, I, I encourage people to run for office because it is an eye opener. I'm a businesswoman. I remember when I got elected uh, to the county board, I thought I can go in and revise things and save taxpayer money and come up with great business strategies to implement. And I was sort of like a bull in a china store thinking I'm gonna do great things. And I get there and I realize the most profound thing I learned and have a tremendous appreciation for are the staff and the people. The Everybody behind the scenes that's working hard, just as hard as you are maybe to. And it, it is a great eye opener. They're professional staff and people that have been serving in, in these roles and positions. They know it inside and out. I come in, I don't know anything. I'm a business person, and I think that would be wonderful for every single constituent. If they could, if they could go and spend time in the planning department, or go spend time with the clerk, and just learn how professional they are and how well things are run. You know, Lincoln, the city of Lincoln, has been recognized by, by being one of the best managed cities right. in the entire United States. And so I come in to the county board with this attitude, and I remember they would show us contracts that we'd have to review and approve, and i like, where's where's the beef? Where are the terms? You know, I want to see the terms. And so that was one of the first areas. Because that's what you do every day I in do your as day a business job. Per yeah. yeah. And so I, I went to the purchasing department that reviews all these contracts, and I said, uh, I need to know how the processes that you use and, and how to review this. They showed me state-of-the-art computers that get bids in, that automatically get assessed and evaluated, mm -hmm. and then you look at the nuts and the guts of it, and you know it's all so well established. And I was like, H I don't even need to give this a second thought. I see how clearly they review and evaluate. So by the time it gets to me, it's just really an administerial approval or disapproval so that's one thing i learned uh, and i i, I yeah. appreciate that jane i appreciate yeah. that about you because you do care and pay attention to details i mean i think a lot of uh people who run for public office it's the sexy i get to make a speech and cast a vote and but a mm -hmm. true public servant to be effective if you know those details and you have a desire to dive into those details and policy issues because you're a bit of a policy wonk. I think I am a policy wonk <laughs> and I'm proud to be a policy yeah. wonk because I think uh, in order to make good decisions, you have to really understand both sides of the issue. You have to understand and, and reach out to the stakeholders. I think mm -hmm. uh, that is one thing I've learned certainly is on the county board and on the city council. You have to reach out to your constituents or the stakeholders, the the builders and the developers. You have to reach out to certainly the department directors and have like, tell me a little bit more about how this piece of ordinance came to be. And, and I think that is really essential for any politician that they must be able to do that. They shouldn't come in with the attitude like, I know it all, I'm smarter well, than you and I'm smarter than them. I think that that is something that you just park it at the door. Don't bring that attitude in. You're here to learn, but you're also here to make a difference by bringing the skill set that you have right. that can really make a difference and help people. People who may not uh, have a business background, people who may not have an understanding of how taxes work. And you kind of simplify it and, and maybe articulate it in a way that people, and like myself included, can understand better and easier to make good decisions. So I think that's fascinating. And moving from county government to city government, and then if you're elected into state government, um, 
you're not dealing with zoning issues anymore. You're not dealing, but you're still dealing with. So, talk a little bit about. Well, we'll get to some of the things that you, your platform, and what do you want to accomplish as a state senator. But just talk a little bit about the differences between county, city, and state government. I mean, you talk about a wealth of knowledge. My goodness, you oh, go from you. county to to city to now state. Uh, you will be in. Uh, in your element, <laughs> because yeah, it's a triple a crown, of, the triple right. crown of politics. <laughs> you know, you, you started the city, the county and the state. But what is important is that you have an understanding of governance and, and how all the city and the county really work hand in glove with the state. So the county is a is a totally different critter. They're really guided and directed by Nebraska state statutes. Right. So that gives them the power to do and to legislate as they do and gives them oversight of a, min a lot of things. As you get onto the city, the city has a tremendous autonomy. So we're not necessarily beholden to the state because right. we're a city of a certain class. And so our charter is our size, constitution. Meaning, a certain class, a certain size. Of our population, of, yeah, yeah. yes. And so you have a different set of rules that guide you as, in your policy making. But the bottom line is that for each one of these, you do have to review and you have to fall back. Uh, as a county commissioner, you fall back on what are the statutes, what are your statutory obligations that have been act, enacted and put in law. And the same for the city council. Uh, what does the charter allow you to do? What does it prohibit you from doing? What are the parameters that you have? What is in the city authority and not in the county's authority? What is in the city authority and not in the state authority? And you know, certainly one of the best examples that we've been dealing with is our public health sure. director. Right. As, as you well know, you know, we're fortunate our city charter and our establishment of our public health department and public health director gave our public health director certain um, rights and parameters to operate and dictate and and design policies that keep the public safe thank goodness thank goodness we because, have been yeah. one of the most healthiest counties and cities in this in the country in the country and that's something that we really can credit to the leadership yes. of pat lopez yes. and mayor gaylord baird yes. And I'd like to take a little bit of credit for Absolutely. the city council you, you, being very supportive right. of this in spite of all the backlash that we get from our constituents. And, you know, sometimes I feel that we failed, that we haven't explained it better or clearer or often enough about what our what our role is in this policy making. And it really is the public health director to make that determination. And we see that battle play out with the city and the oh state, goodness. certainly in Omaha. Oh my goodness. And, and so, so those just, are good examples. Well, so just real quick, because you brought that up, yeah. to, to clarify for our listeners and viewers why Lincoln has carved out, why we are different than uh, Omaha or well, other Well, we're different because, because our public health department and the authority invested in the public health director superseded, the state of was Nebraska. grandfathered in yeah. prior to what the state of Nebraska was able to issue and direct uh, to other established uh, health departments or areas. Right. So it's like we, we came up with these great ideas, but you know, it goes back to local authority. It does. Local authority. It's, um, you know, the people who are on the ground closest to our yep. constituents, who are closest to understanding what impacts them, what matters to them. And I think and I, I'm all about local authority, keeping it to the local level, because they, they're the, the boots on the beat. They're the yeah. eyes and ears listening to what's going on around them. And they're in the best position to make the best decisions that impact their constituents and the people they serve. And of course, public safety is, is like number one. Should, it should be. So uh, it I find fascinating. And, and if anyone follows me on uh, Twitter, you might get this uh, vibe once in a while. Ask Dan, the PR man on Twitter, by the way. <laughs> um, the hypocrisy of some politicians who used to beat the drum for local control, and but when it comes to an issue they don't agree with, then it's like, uh, we want to supersede that local control. Anyway. Yeah, and that happens, I think that happens to any politician. You know, they'll fall back on something that they feel more comfortable talking about and 
rather than looking in everything in its totality. And you have to, and like I say this all the time, you don't make a budget in a vacuum. You look at what this, what the county is doing, what the city is doing, what it, the state is doing. It all impacts our taxpayers. And so you have to be very mindful of that. On the state level, you know, they talk about the three-legged stool, about what are the revenues right. that contribute to that. And, you know, they we talk a lot about property taxes and how onerous and burdensome they are to our constituents. I get that. Believe me, as as a business owner and an operator of many commercial properties, you we pay, pay a, a lot. Bit of and so tax, yeah. I, I'm, I'm very mindful of that. And so we have to be very careful. The state doesn't have any authority when it comes to our property taxes. That's set at the local and, level. And that is a misconception that most big, people don't understand. Or, and then another misconception is, you know, when so on the city council and the county board, you know, the city council is about 13 percent, like 13 cents out of every dollar. The county board is 12 cents out of every dollar. But our wonderful public education is really about 63, yeah. 64 yeah. cents out of every dollar. And, and I'm certainly very proud of our public education. Yeah, I think that we are in, incredibly proud and rightly so of the well-educated workforce that comes out of our state. Because why? Because all those people that are educated in our state that want to see go to New York or the West Coast, they're snatched up because they're so qualified and they're so well educated. And that we should be very proud of. Absolutely. So uh, talk a little bit, Jane, about uh, some of the things you want to accomplish should you be elected to the Nebraska legislature. I sure. mean, those hot button issues, as you mentioned, property taxes, of course, uh, education dollars. What? T tell us. Well, education some of the dollars, it, it all starts with education dollars. You know, the state of Nebraska is really winning at the race to the bottom, yeah. meaning the race to the bottom of the, the percentage of the state dollars that are spent towards public education. That's nothing to be proud of. And it has been declining, which- So it, more of that, I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah. so more of that burden's been placed on the local taxpayer. The local taxpayer, but also that county uh, jurisdiction, because they're the ones that really, working with their city municipality, have to make that determination on how much of those taxes get spent for public education. The public education has a lid, but you know, they wanna make sure their kids are well educated and we're proud of that, but you know, the state can't really, you know, they try, but they're very hardest to control that. The best way you can get property tax relief to our citizens is really to reinstate state aid to cities and counties and also be very supportive of providing additional funding for public education. How can that be done? Senator Lynn Walls, yes. who is from Fremont, she has introduced a wonderful piece of legislation that is trying to right size that, you know, shift it away. Property tax relief, real property tax relief, starts with finding ways to fund public education and not always relying on our local property taxes to do so. So. There's a big surplus, as we may have all heard uh, in the Nebraska legislature. There's, there's some billions with a B coming, B with coming yeah, out of there. Yeah. And so this is a wonderful opportunity. And her bill is asking for a big chunk of those funds to go out to those uh, counties and, and school districts throughout the state of Nebraska. In exchange, they're going to have to lower their, their mill levy, their property right. tax rate in doing so. And then in lowering the property tax rate, that impacts all of us as well. So that's really in, in living up to that commitment going forward. That's a future expense that has to be maintained. Um, I'm pretty big. When I came on as, as the county commissioners, that was when Governor Heineman did away with state aid to cities and counties. And oh, I remember right. very clearly right. back then, the city of Lincoln would get about 1.6 million, the county would get about 1.2 million. Now we would take that and, and reinvest it in our, our county and other projects that were impactful to the city and the county. But absent that, that's like a big suck from our budget. Where do we get that additional funding to supplant that? And it's really hard. The only way you can do it is either uh, cut, 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 but that's not what our constituents want. They're, nope. We're really proud in Lincoln, Nebraska, we deliver on great services uh, and a great community on public safety, on our roads. Believe me, I know we can be better at our roads. We're always trying to catch up with the huge demand there. 
the public safety and the amenities. We're proud of our parks. We're proud of our libraries, as we rightly should be, of the wonderful amenities we have right in our city. But they do come at us as a cost. And so we have to figure out how do we create that balance for our constituents. So I go back to that. The state did away with state aid to cities and counties. They started to pull back on contributions for public education. And so it sort of snowballs because then that burden and the pressure is on property taxes. That's that's our vehicle of taxing authority. Well, so. It's clear to me, Jane. I, uh, thank you for that. Uh, but it is clear to me But because of your experience on the county level and the city level, you really are uh, very well versed to take that the experience into the state legislature. Um, my producer tells me that we're running out of time. This, see, what? I told you, what? I told you this would I go like this. I haven't finished my beer. I know it. Well, <laughs> we can move into the second episode or something. Okay, second episode. No, no. Um, no, we can do this. Um, uh, two questions. One, as we uh, wind up, uh, so think about this when we wind up. Uh, how can people get a hold of you? And, and we'll do all that in the notes and stuff too. So think okay. about that. But second of all, or maybe first, I really want to talk a little bit about um, your experience when it comes to attracting talent. To me, the biggest issue is not taxes. It's, I mean, I understand all that. Yes. How are we going to find the workers to work for your stores and for my public relations consulting business and the brewers that brew our great craft beer. And to attract we, police and public safety, and firefighters to want to come. How are we in. going to do that on the state level? It's, it's, it's a huge thing that we need to be actively engaged in. Bottom line, we need to be a more welcoming state. Yeah. We need to be a more tolerant state. Yeah. We need to be a more accepting state. Yeah. And, and, and so what are the policies? That so I think, you know, what kind of got confused with Blueprint for Nebraska, they said all those same th things. Yep. But, you know, business people heard one thing like, oh, lower, lower our corporate income tax, lower our personal property taxes, lower our personal income tax. That's those not, workers don't give a rip about those They don't those care. Things. They want to be in a community that is progressive, yep. that is futuristic, yep. that really invests in the amenities yep. that can retain if, people and if, if, attract people. That's right. If we're stealing people from Chicago and from Kansas City and from Denver, we, we have to have those We have things. to up our game. We, we have, have to, to up, up our, our game. game. I say be a very welcoming state. That means be a more inclusive state. And I'm really proud on our city council that I think You've we really embody yeah. <clears throat> what our city constituents look like yeah. and who they are. And, and that's one thing I'm really proud of. Well, first, thank you for your service. <clears throat> Mom, uh, I wish you well uh, in your next, uh, so primary in May, uh, general in, in November. November. And I'm uh, once the weather improves, I'm going to be out walking we'll and listening, not walking and talking, listening. <laughs> and I think that's that's the key to being successful on any campaign. And uh, I do intend to win. But <clears throat> if you need to go know more about me, because I think everybody pretty much knows a lot about me, you can go to www.janeraybold.com. Very good. And we'll put that in the notes. Well, Jane, I can't thank you enough for thank you from one to forty four. <laughs> uh, episodes and, and I think we even have a little snapshot that we may see up on the uh, oh, great. of you and, and, and Matt so let me close by just uh, thanking our production editing and distribution services uh, by BCom Solutions uh, Kim Remington our operations manager at Parsons Public Relations Pints and Politics theme music that you may be hearing by Jack Rodenberg. How about that? Oh. A well-known family here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, thanks to Fuse Coworking, our home of Pints and Politics and Parsons Public Relations, and my friend and our guest, Cheers. Jane Raybould. Thank you Cheers, so much friend. for having me. It's You're been welcome. an honor. <laughs>